So we're going to go on now to our next poet, who I believe now we're talking to David Wilson, are we? Yes, we are. Well, yes, we are. Hello, David, and we're back to we're back to the Bay Area. Greetings from San Francisco. <clears throat> chairman of the world. If I were chairman of the world, mice would not vex disco stew. Cats would patrol all Midgard and disco stew's farmhouse too. From warrior cat to kitty pet, no solace for the mice that roared. Be they fierce as reap a cheap, be they twerp or low pipsqueak, even Frederick, the poet mouse, from the tip of his nose to the end of his tail. Ha ha, Stuart Little, cut away all paper bags. The film is nothing like the book. You are not chairman of the world, and neither am I. Alas, alack, alark, leave birds out of this. Dapper, tweed-dressed mice driving roadsters or fighting battles with flashing swords. Of no concern to cats and universes next door. Space time for Springers, Schrodinger. Are you alive or are you dead? I like you, cat. I will call you Kim. Now go and catch those mice. Replied the cat, I will call you lush. I will call you sot. No is kitten, is cat. Name is Kim. And along with Orange Dudley and Tabby Cats, Max and Mo, Mama Kitty too, cat goddess dressed her soul, and Queen Silvara, regal and aloof, in the forest of Kim. All send greetings, Disco Stew. Do not be downhearted. Your mice shall soon be thwarted, swatted down. Your home again, a sea of tranquility, when those mice are gone. Yours in jest, the chairman of the world. <laughs> nominated, I will not run. If elected, I will not serve. So um, this morning, I was uh, going through the old poetry shelf, and I found this. This was a publication called Hyperion. It was put out in uh, Berkeley in the 70s. And this particular uh, copy, one of the contributors gave this to me very right at the dawn of my, uh, when I was becoming aware of myself as a poet. This definitely influenced me. You see, this issue here was dedicated to the seafarer, Ezra Pound. This came out just after his death. And uh, among things in here, they had this lovely examples of, uh, there's a nice example of Ezra's handwriting, which is very, very neat. And, uh, and here's the other side of it here. So somebody transcribed those, and I'm going to do, and here's some nice pictures of the, uh, the old poet there. Uh, somebody transcribe these. I'm going to read this. A transcription of pound documents. Damnation to bureaucrats. Damn the betrayers of the national constitution. Hell take the souls of Wilson and of the flea-headed Coolidge. God damn those responsible for copyright evils, passport idiocy, red tape, Article 211 of Penal Code made by guerrillas for the further stultification of imbeciles. God damn all those who take no active part in eliminating these evils. Damn those who invade the private domain of the individual directly or by making of suffocating inequitous laws against all these maledictions and major anathema. Ezra Pound, 7 May 1930. 
8 May, Paris. Dear Judge Beals, I'd rather you framed it and hung it up in court, but perhaps it is a bit too lyric. Cordially, E. Pound. Probably. I get nervous every time I post a picture. They not only took him down, but they stuck him. They stuck him in the gorilla cage. And oh yeah, yeah. He picked the wrong oh. side on the war. They took they took him down like crazy, of course, man. Well, I no no. I, okay, I was fast forwarding that if that time, if he were to present that language today on today's leadership, would he be taken down? It was almost a rhetorical question. Really. Oh, I'm sorry. Of course, though, when uh, when Ezra was in the cage and went mad, he also began writing the cantos at that time as well. So. Well, they had a lot better to say than his propaganda on, on behalf of Mussolini. Yeah, no, that was stupid. He was definitely a crank, cranky guy, you know. So you have another one for us. Yeah, so I was thumbing through this and... Uh, uh, there's some really amazing poems in here. So, and last week I read the uh, piece, the North Beach piece. So here's a North Beach poem I found in here. This is by a poet named A.D. Winans, W-I-N-A-N-S, who I'm not familiar with their work. Winans. Winans, you know that person? Yes. Okay. Uh, and there's a lot of name dropping in this poem, so. For Bob Kaufman, room full of poets, writers, philosophers, drinking the hours away at Specs Bar here in North Beach this cold weekend night, Vicky and the great felony artist waiting for Fairfax Alex and the midnight party, Patchen's old lady and books translated into a hundred different tongues. A table full of beatniks, memories, Old Testament prophets. Michelin, and yes, you, Bob Kaufman, come out of the evening shadows, out from beneath your safe withdrawal that makes you walk these streets no longer filled with wonder. Sitting at that table reciting Yeats, an illicit Michelin calls you a titleist. But more than one poet's ego is like the resumection here at Specs, with the table running over like the Last Supper, but there is no rooster to crow his betrayal, black Jesus of the 50s. Sitting here, blinking yesterday's nightmares, a tear came to my eye, drinking tonic water in place of rye, calculated madness in the air, no place to dance rainbows buried in the alley. The old gods mixed in with the new. Your long years of silence broken. A prisoner of war come home to tell all. A prisoner of war walking the streets of North Beach. A not so pale ghost come home to tell it all. Tell it all, elicit and the tea room ball. Your dreams of America are dead. They killed them slower than any war. Your dreams of America are deader than the electricity they shot up into your head in hospital rooms where the blood ran black, not red. But tonight you are alive, thin and trembling like a pale ghost, the protruding veins of your skull working out their poetic skill, eyes dilated, lips trembling, speed freak giant come home to taunt the soldiers here at Specs. New but not so new words from the head, soft angel eyes carrying the burden of past murders on shoulders stooped from the executioner's sword. Yeah, I'm ready. 
Yeah. You can tell I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> we're ready for that. All right. Here's a poem. This one's not really in season, but I just feel like reading this one today. The Return to Feather River. Long time we ride up California Highway to Feather River. Two students, one teacher, one poet. We stop and eat at the muffin tree and then continue across the valley, Indian summer, harvest time, watching tomato trucks roll by. Looking up at the dingy blue sky, crisscrossed with the vapor trails of jets. Another truck with wood slate sides and bright red juicy tomatoes belching black smoke. Tall corn swaying in the wind at the edge of the highway. We begin to climb Volkswagen bug laboring up the steep mountain grade. The suddenly blue sky, deep high blue sky, crisp breaths of air. Stop by the roadside to stretch arms and legs. Walk upon piled granite. Down through Pine Valley, Truckee to Quincy, small bubbling river, late afternoon sun, white and gray cloud, cold wind. Stuart swerves to miss a squirrel, adrenaline rush. Wide, wide grassy valley, small town, whitewashed houses, chili and coffee at Old Cafe. Stuart and Kevin eat pie, kneel in the car. Outside, a fat highway patrol officer watches us from across the street while he buckles on his gun. Feather River Canyon, cattle grazing, controlled fires burning, evening coming on, gray rock, green trees browning with autumn. Hey, it's January, but why not an autumn poem? Huh? Right. Well, you know, every, notice that every day we have so much more additional sunlight. Indeed. Well, you know, it will have the return of spring and then the lush of summer. So. Indeed we will. Right. So, um, I'll read, uh, I'm going to read another one from Hyperion the, uh, that I uncovered this morning. So this is by a poet named Dari Lamieu, M-I-E-U-X, who I'm, I'm another another poet I'm not familiar with. And the other one was uh, uh, for Bob Kaufman. This one is for Ginsburg. I just want to say that I'm freaking out. I just want Ginsburg to know that. I just want to say that I found out there's no way to get it done. There's no way to live the good life. There's no way to stop the war. There's no way we're going to be able to go into the supermarket and get what we need without good looks. There's no way to get the armies out of Ulster. There's no way to get the cops out of Berkeley. We're not going to have revolution in our lifetime. We're not going to find true love. We're not going to be able to wean ourselves from TV commercials. We're not going to be able to sleep at night without looking under the bed for snipers first. There's no way to get the government out of our phone conversations. There's no way to get God out of heaven. There's no way to get them to stop using us for filing cabinets. We're not going to be able to fuck whoever the hell we please and not have them write dirty books about it. I have lived here for 23 years now and already seen history repeat itself. Last night they came with cops hunting witches. I just want to tell you, Ginsburg and all, that this is freaking me out. 
I have accumulated four half-empty coffee cups on my floor writing poetry. Do you know there isn't any poetry left? Do you know they're drinking cold duck on the radio and I'm not getting any? Can you look at the moon anymore with integrity? Can you honestly get up out of bed in the morning? Can you imagine what it's like to be 23 years old and still living in the city? I hate cars and the only things I read in the papers are the funnies and the Bond Wit Teller advertisements. I want you to know I put on my good clothes this morning and it made me neither happy nor rich. The tube is burned out inside its box. There aren't any pictures left. There isn't any news fit to print. A long time ago, they took the mystery out of the sky and replaced it with a flag. They cover their cocks with a flag or a rosebud, it doesn't matter. Your beard is oppressing me. Your head has grown too old for me. I just want to tell you, Ginsburg, I saw you at Tufts and you wouldn't look me in the eye. You wouldn't read America. You had everyone chanting Hari Krishna, Hari Hari. You sang, you wooed them with your voice. I can't feel your good karma anymore. You lied to me in 1956. You and Eisenhower. If you want to know what I'm going to do about it, it's classified information. I'm making war. You can't tell me any more about love. I don't expect you to understand. My friend Anne read that in five years, the oceans will die. What are you going to do about it? I expect you to set up a commission and laws. I want laws. I want you to stop scaring this. I want you to get tranquilizers for Anne so she can sleep at night. I want you to pay me for this poem. I want to put a chicken in every pot and let me put pot in my chicken if I want to. I want you to get off the moon. That's rape. I want you to go on trial for murder. I want your imperial prick out of my brain. Did I tell you that you were my childhood idol, Ginsburg? I just want you to know I don't blame you. I'm learning economy. Already I've given up capital letters as a waste of time. And Ginsburg, some of us will have babies who won't be brought up right. And in two or three generations, we ought to have this thing licked. That's what I found this morning. <laughs> in your, in your face. <laughs>